surprised by people being like, oh, do you know what? I wish I could do that. Or I wish I had the courage to do that. And actually then that spurs you on, but it's just assuming that people will be negative and assuming that, you know, it won't work is, is just the way our brains work, sadly. It's that whole, they're, they're trying to protect you, aren't they? It's that, you know, the, the flight and um, um, flight. <laughs> no, what is it? Now I've lost it. Fight, fight, um, flight. That's it. Fight, flight or freeze. You know, you, you get to the decision making and you're thinking to yourself, right, I'm, I'm either like I had to, had to have that kind of decision where I was frozen for such a long time. And then it was like, then I was forced into um, taking that flighty step, I suppose, um, through circumstance. And I think if you can get to a point where you're making a decision when you're not under stress and you're, you've had that opportunity to have conversations with people and to start thinking about what you want out of life without it being forced upon you, I think it, it just makes the process so much easier. Yeah, that's a good point. I think um, for myself, when I decided to go full-time self-employed and really give my business a go, it was something I'd always done, not as a hobby, but it was very part-time alongside my other work. And for me, it was a different stressful situation than you, but I had just moved overseas from Canada. So I came Mm -hmm. from Canada to Scotland and went, okay, I've got this resume of working for arts organizations and nonprofits doing communications and marketing work but nobody knows who any of these organizations are here. I don't have any network. Nobody knows the university I went to. So I did try and apply for a few jobs when I first came over and just, it was, it was near impossible um, or it felt that way anyways. And I think it would have maybe been a little bit of an easier transition into entrepreneurship had I not felt quite stressed and worried about what I was going to do. Um, Had I just decided from the start, you know what, let's just go for it. Um, but those first kind of couple of months of going, oh, I don't know, can I really do this? Um, and and maybe that's just something that everybody has to go through, whatever your circumstances are, because you're right, we are sort of built to protect ourselves with our thoughts. And when these dreams and big ideas pop in our head, there is always that voice going, oh, are you sure you can do that? Is that maybe a bit ambitious? Um, and it's hard to turn that voice off. So is that something that you find um, most of your clients experience at some point in their their thought process oh absolutely I think when you when you work with somebody you often they it's not something they necessarily say consciously but it's almost like they say things subconsciously um that these are off the cuff comments um like oh I'd love to be able to do that but I just I just don't think that's something you know I would be able to do that I'll be able to manage that and you have to and, and what I like to do and you know I have my own coach and she always um uses the phrase she says like I'm going to hold up the mirror now and I'm going to force you to to look at yourself in the mirror and and she'll say what I've said back to me and it's and it's actually really interesting because it's only when someone repeats it back to you that you realize you've actually said it because I think we get so used to almost making these kinds of comments um and nobody challenging us on it and I, and I think that's really powerful to to hold that mirror up um and to say you know what this is you just said this and then and then you sort of go oh and it really makes you sort of take stock and unpick it a bit more and why do you say that why do you think that and I think until you get to the bottom of all these reasons why you think you can't there's no you won't be able you there's no can involved because you're always saying to yourself no I can't do that I'd love to do that you often hear that people say oh you know I'd love to um to to paint or i'd love to write or i'd love to do something that's completely creative normally and then they'll say oh but i i just don't have the time or i i, I don't think i could do that i i don't think i i had i never did very well at writing at school or something like that and it's only when you're sort of saying okay tell me a bit more about the time thing and then you unpick about what they mean about time and you know if you really wanted to do it could you find the time so it's just about noticing that negative talk and and just in a very nice way challenging and and supporting them to 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 recognize it and to do something about it that's so interesting and I absolutely think you're right about that so I don't do any sort of coaching um, and I never have so I don't know that from a coach perspective but even just from a personal perspective how often do you speak to friends perhaps about starting your business or new people that you meet um, and you get that all the time. I'd love to do something like that. I would love to to chase the dream or um, pursue a hobby into a business or things like that. I get comments like that all the time. And often mm. from people that are in quite um, 
like high level career positions as you were yourself people that have worked their way up and up and then maybe gotten to the top and realized actually that doesn't fit with the lifestyle they want or they're no longer happy or whatever the reasons may be so it's interesting that across the board um, in both a sort of personal and business perspective people are saying things like that yeah and I think it's it's one of those it's a lot of it's confidence and I think um you know we all we all ebb and flow with confidence and when you're in a career that maybe you've been in for a long time so if so for example teaching I've been in for 15 years and it, it was I was comfortable and you get comfortable and you think oh and then you think about maybe one day doing something else or maybe one day changing career or starting a business and then you think about it a bit more and then you realize that it takes you way out of that comfort zone and into, you know, what coaches sometimes call your stretch zone. Um, and, and actually every time you dip a toe in, you're like, oh, well, actually that's, that's a little bit too uncomfortable. And, and you kind of think, oh, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll think about this again in six months, or maybe I'll think about this next year. Um, or maybe once I've got myself a house or once I've settled down, I'll do this or, you know, well, I wouldn't be able to do that unless this happened. And, and you kind of, all those excuses come up and actually it's only by pushing yourself out into your stretch zone and, and not being comfortable. And it's that whole getting uncomfortable, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that's, that's the thing that makes the difference between saying you will do it one day to actually doing it today and thinking, right, I'm going to, I'm going to just get used to this uncomfortable feeling and this feeling of, you know, feeling a bit sick <laughs> or, or a bit panicky or a bit, you know, sweaty and stressed about decisions, but actually knowing that you have to push through those to get to where you want to go. Because when you eventually get there and you look back on all those things you had to do, you become, you're so much more confident, you're so much more, you feel so much more empowered and you realise that you can do the difficult things if you just try them out and if you fail and this is what I love about the whole growth mindset idea and, and I used to work a lot with this with, with children but it's so transferable is that failure is okay when we were young it was you know if you didn't get 10 out of 10 on your spelling test you know you'd, you'd failed whereas now you know the emphasis on you know for children if you got 7 out of 10 on your spelling test it's like you're praising the effort you're praising the fact that yeah you got 7 and okay what the three you didn't get okay maybe next time you know how could you try and learn those three next time to help you rather than it being you've got seven out of ten and there's no conversation about how they could develop so as an adult or with these decisions we make if things don't go well instead of thinking right that's it this obviously isn't for me I've either made a terrible mistake I shouldn't be I should never have started this business or you know who was I to think this was ever going to work it's about stopping and, and afterwards thinking about, okay, what lessons have I learned from that? And what, what can I do now to improve that situation or to change that? And, and that's what I, I love about the whole philosophy around mindset is that it's taking people away from their fixed approach. The idea that if I fail at something, that's it, I failed. And thinking, okay, failure is part of growth. Failure is part of learning and adapting and evolving. So, you know, why not sit and look at it and unpick it and think about how it's going to help you move forward? So, yeah, that's that's what I love about it. <laughs> I think what's so interesting as you're talking to me about the specifics of what you do and how much mindset is a part of it. I didn't realize that. And I wonder if a lot of people that are listening are the same in that they think of coaching perhaps as a little bit more um, like business strategizing but not really realizing how much this sort of mindset and the mental stuff comes into play. And I think what you said makes so much sense. If you have not sorted out all of these things that you've internalized or are um, subconsciously feeling, if you can't work through all of that first, how can you ever succeed? Um, and I think that's so interesting and something that probably a lot of us just shove to the side and don't deal with and just try and keep pushing forward without resolving the issues. So how do you how do you get people to open up with this kind of stuff? Because I imagine for some people it comes quite naturally and for others and they find it quite difficult to, to speak about. 
I think it's, um, well, knowing the person you're working with and, and what approach works for them. And I think it's, it's interesting because I try to work with people who are quite open-minded, um, who enjoy a challenge, um, who know that hard work is just part and parcel of this journey. Um, and, but also that they're willing to, to think through um, other options. And I think it's, it's very difficult there are, you know, if you've, I think what the, the trouble is with, with mindset um, is that it's almost something we've grown up with. You've grown up with a certain mindset about how you learn and develop. And I think as, as you get to adulthood, you either stick very much in the lane that you've always been in, or you think to yourself, there must be, a, there must be other ways of doing this. And you're naturally uh, curious, you're naturally inquisitive. And I think when you meet somebody certainly as a coach you get to sort of know them by the things they say you pick up on the tiny nuances you pick up on um if for example they they might say something like i always feel like this or i feel this um about the decision i'm making um then you know that they're quite there's somebody who feels if they're somebody who sees things so i you know they might say for example um oh i see what you mean or oh yeah, I can totally see that. Then you know they're a visual person. So you get to know people on very kind of a very micro level um, and you can, you can gauge how best to approach them. So there might be some, there are people that I've worked with where you can be quite direct and really say to them, okay, hang on, because, you know, it sounds to me like, you know, what, what could you say differently there? Like you said that, you might have said, for example, I, oh, I'm, I could never write that book. Um, and you, and you could say, well, never, you could never write a book. And then, and it's about challenging the words they're using. So it might be that always and never, you know, the idea that something is absolute. And if you say, oh, so, so it, tell me a bit more about never being able to write it. What do you mean by never? And then they're like, well, I'm not saying I could never write it. Okay. So what, you know, so it's about, um, or I always do that. Whenever I try and stand up and make a speech, I always fumble over my words. So you always, do you always do that? Well, most of the time. Okay. So not always, but most of the time. And then you sort of say when it has worked, you know, what, what went well? And then they're forced to think about success and things that, okay and then they start to realize that they don't always do this or they're they're not never going to do something so it's just about knowing your your client knowing the person you're working with and how best to approach it you can either be quite blunt or you have to kind of tread lightly around it and and just unpick it very slowly so i imagine that as a coach that is part of what you do you learn how to read people and as you're saying there's these cues people give which i also find very interesting i never thought of it that way before um from the other side of it as a small business owner if i wanted to start working with a coach how do i find a coach that's right for me and i think this is where a lot of people are kind of a little bit lost because unless you are a coach or have worked with one I think a lot of people don't quite understand what that means or how to find the right coach for them. It sounds like you do a mix of kind of mindset coaching and also helping people figure out their, their new business or their career. Um, but there are coaches who are just very specific. No, I do business strategy or no, I only do mindset or, and um, how do you, how do you kind of find the right coach and the right type of coach for you? Well, that, that, that's a really good question. And I think what, to start with, I think it's important that people understand the difference between a coach and a mentor, because sometimes there's confusion. The word coach, um, unfortunately, I think, has kind of been banded around quite a lot in terms of um, people sometimes just call themselves a coach and they don't really know what a coach is that's different to what a mentor is. Um, and the, the, the difference is that a mentor can tell you or a consultant will tell you what to do. Um, whereas a coach will ask you questions so that you find the answers yourself. So I can technically, I can coach anybody because I don't have to specialize in a specific area because I'm just asking questions that get the, that facilitate that person's thinking around the topic they want to talk about. Um, however, I think coaches um, tend to specialize in areas that they're really, really interested in or have um, experience in. 
So, for example, I specialise working with people who want change, particularly career change, um, because I've been there. 